Okay, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's time to start this uh, webinar, and I will thank you uh, to attend this webinar dedicated today to rock classes definition and to classification, then how to define rock classes using a machine learning approach combined with the geostatistical approach. Uh, before starting, uh, maybe you see my video. I will switch it off uh, for the presentation and switch it on again for the question and answers. At the end, we will have this question and answers session. Uh, before going on, uh, could you please confirm in the chat zone or in the question zone that the sound is correct? And uh, everybody, sound is correct or good? Okay. So um, it's okay, so we can start and I will switch off my video and then let's go. So we are together for about half an hour. Right? And so I'd be happy to answer questions at the end of the present presentation. You have a dedicated uh, zone for questions, you can answer questions, you type questions during the presentation and I'll answer at the end. And uh, you will get a video record of this webinar um, very soon uh, in the GeoVariances website. So do not hesitate to connect and to, uh, to have a look on this recording after the presentation. So during the webinar, I'll show you how to perform a, first a geostatistical clustering, which is uh, an innovative technique, huh? uh, which will be combined with a machine learning algorithm in order to identify and characterize so-called electrophages, so generally speaking, rock classes, uh, calculated from recordings along uh, a drill hole or along a well, uh, from electric logs uh, or measurements along uh, a drill hole. And the originality of this uh, electrophages calculation algorithm is that it considers the spatial relationship between data points. It accounts for lateral variations on depositional environments and during the definition of the electrophages. So, these characteristics should enhance the rock typing process. I'll make a video of a live presentation after the, the slides. This, uh, video, this live demo will be made with Isatis Neo, which is a, a software in which these algorithms are implemented and software developed and marketed by uh, geovariances. I will use the petroleum edition, but the classification algorithms are available in the mining edition as well and in other uh, specific editions uh, of Isatis Neo. So first, let's define what is a geostatistical clustering. Actually, it's a variant of hierarchical clustering algorithm. Uh, which provides sample classifications into, into fascias, into domains, and generally in the oil and gas industry, we talk about fascias soon, very, very often. We prefer sometimes the name of domain in mining industry. So rock classes and, resp and uh, hierarchical clustering, we respect data connectivity and similarity, or at least the geostatistical uh, variant will respect data connectivity and similarity. So it will combine uh, geolo geological concepts with statistical concepts. And we have different controls. We can control the anisotropies. So it means that we can force the algorithm to account for uh, anisotropies in the, in the spatial distribution of the geological features. We can combine different sources of data, uh, which will be weighted in the similarity or dissimilarity calculations. We can combine different variables and with different weights, relative weights from the different sources, 
I will show it uh, during the demo. And we can control the number of fishes we, we want to define. And there are some post-processing tools to smooth a little bit the distribution of, uh, of fishes if needed. So what is the principle? Actually, it's a, a hierarchical clustering. Therefore, we calculate a dissimilarity between groups of observations. Uh, here, the originality is first data are structured on a graph according to their location. So we define some pairs of point of samples by connecting the different samples uh, all together. So we can connect a given sample with all the other samples and define a high number of pairs. This is a left uh, drawing uh, on the slide. Or, and this is the originality of this algorithm, we can connect only some samples which are in the same neighborhood. It means that we define a given neighborhood when we are located at a given sample. And we want to look at the, the other sample that will be connected with this one. Instead of connecting all the others, we will connect only the samples that are within a given neighborhood defined by the user, this neighborhood being centered on the point we are studying. So it means we will define a, a subset of all the possible connections. And this subset accounts for the spatial relationship. We consider only the neighbors with a neighborhood which can be elongated, which can take into account geological trends and geological anisotropies. Therefore, we force the connections between pairs to account for the geological, the main geological trends. And it's a way, this, this playing with this neighborhood is a way to input the geological knowledge to input geological interpretations provided by the, the geologists uh, through the neighborhood size and through the neighborhood orientation. So when we have defined this graph on which we will calculate um, dissimilarity function, uh, so dissimilarity or similarity in two opposite ways of uh, talking about the same thing, uh, a low dissimilarity corresponds to a high similarity. Um, here we, we have a formula to calculate the dissimilarity. And uh, so for all the connections in the graph, we will calculate the dissimilarity between the inside the pairs of points and we will merge in the same uh, group uh, the two points that are that correspond to the lowest dissimilarity, so hi the highest similarity. And then we recalculate the dissimilarity between all the other samples with this group. Again, the lowest dissimilarity and so on. And then so the hierarchical process, uh, we define progressively uh, a tree, uh, a hierarchic tree, uh, connecting all the different uh, pairs of, uh, of samples. As we are in a graph, which is a little bit special, we will enforce the spatial connectivity of the clusters and while respecting the dissimilarities between the pairs of, uh, of observations. It is a hierarchical clustering. And a hierarchical clustering is quite uh, time consuming and uh, resource demanding on, uh, when, when applied on large data sets. So we have to be very careful to, to, to be operational with large data sets, which is the most common case now. Um, we need to find a way to improve performance and to uh, get the faces, get the classification results in a reasonable amount of time. 
So this can be done by combining two approaches. First, the geostatistical hierarchical clustering on a selection of samples to define to, to facies which accounts for the um, spatial relationship between, uh, between samples. These first results of the hierarchical, uh, geostatistical hierarchical clustering will be used as a training set for a supervised classification using a support vector machine algorithm. So the support vector machine algorithms comes from the domain of um, machine learning and data mining, and it's a very efficient uh, and, and fast uh, classification algorithm, supervised classification algorithm. Uh, so, which allows calculating uh, quite rapidly uh, the results on the whole data set while preserving the characteristics uh, introduced by the ge geostatistical hierarchical clustering method. So we will, it will be an hybrid classification technique. From the data set, we um, apply first a geostatistical approach and geostatistical hierarchical clustering approach to get a first result on a subset of the whole data set. This becomes, this result becomes training samples and define training samples for the SVM uh, classifier. And then we launch the SVM and we get the result on the whole data set. And ge geological concepts have been introduced at the first stage and it is preserved uh, during the whole process. If we have already defined facies or domains, then we directly use uh, these uh, facies uh, to the whole data set with a supervised classification uh, with a support vector machine algorithm uh, directly, if it exists. Um, possibly uh, what can be done if we have this definition on few data only, on few samples only, we can extend a little bit with a geostatistical algorithm uh, this definition on a larger subset of the whole data set and then launch the supervised classification. So everything is, any combination is possible. So I will illustrate that with a live demo. on a data set uh, which comes from the oil and gas industry. It's a set of wells provided by the um, oil and gas authority of the United Kingdom. So it's a set of wells coming from North Sea, away ashore from uh, north of England and in between north of England, south of Scotland, and uh, the Netherlands on the other side. Um, we have electric logs on these uh, measured uh, along these wells, and we have the location map of these wells. So it is uh, easy in AZTIS Neo, in the statistics menu, we have this data clustering. Um, menu uh, icon. So we launch the, the panel, the workflow for data clustering, and then we just define uh, okay, where are the input data? Is there a selection? And we define the output variable, and then we go to the definition of the parameters, input parameters for the uh, clustering algorithm. So I have defined here a set of four uh, electric logs, the density, a sonic, a gamma ray, a photoelectric factor. It is possible when we have, uh, but in that particular data, uh, data set, I do not have uh, already defined uh, categorical variables. It means already defined facies. But if you have some, you can input them here 
And that's the reason why I said, if you have an already defined facious on a, only in few uh, exploration wells, for example, or exploration real holes, uh, but you want to um, take advantage of this uh, uh, facious definition uh, provided by the geologist, okay, you can input there, give a weight to this uh, part of the information, give a weight to the electric logs or to the measurements along the drill holes, and you can also put a weight on the coordinates. Huh? You see here I have defined a coordinate weight proportion of 5%, so it means a low contribution of the coordinates. And all these different sources of data are combined, weighted, in the formula which provides the dissimilarity between the, the different, uh, inside the different pairs of points. Uh, I will calculate first with the low coordinate proportion and you will see uh, after what will be the impact of a high coordinate uh, weight of proportion, high coordinate weight. I have defined my uh, five facies, uh, number of facies is five uh, and that's it. So live demo, I can click on next. It will launch the calculation. So first the geostatistical uh, clustering which is in progress. I have uh, parameterized the algorithms to get a result in a very short time. I will show you uh, how it can be done. And when the hierarchical classification, the geostatistical hierarchical classification is finished, then we launch the support vector machine. You see the, um, the progress. And then we calculate the display of the results. Here are the results. So we have, I will enlarge a little bit, so even more. Okay, I have my data, the wells, with, uh, which are colored. Huh? So we have some colors uh, which correspond to the different faces that have been. Uh, estimated and we see the hierarchic tree resulting from the geostatistical hierarchical algorithm and the definition some box plots defining the characteristics of the different uh, as a contribution to the faces of each uh, data so xyz is the coordinates and then the density, sonic, gamma ray, photoelectric factors, so the different recordings along the wells and the uh, coordinates. So we can see the contribution of each to the um, definition of each facious. So you have seen that it's quite fast and we, we have this definition. If I had defined something different, for example, a low a high contribution of coordinates. Normally, so 95%. Uh, normally, what will happen is that uh, large contrib strong contribution of coordinates. It means that I will identify the clusters of wells, plus possibly some variation inside each cluster, but. Uh, it will put the emphasis on the clusters of wells, of course, because the contribution of the coordinates is very high. And we will see it. Here it is. And you see a cl first cluster here in the south, a blue cluster in the north, and another, the main cluster here with some variation inside this cluster which is quite a logical uh, result. This is interesting because it means that we have a way to um, combine different sources of information and to introduce in the process some soft constraints. 
when we have different characteristics in different zones, we can separate the zones. But if we have different areas, we, which are slightly different, but similar as well, they are, let's say, correlated. So there is a smooth transition between them. Uh, then it is too strong to separate the, the different zones. We can combine all these zones and just give a certain weight, customized weight of coordinates to provide a soft input and a soft constraint coming from the location of the wells, so the area, so the geological trend, plus uh, a contribution of the electric logs, of a contribution of the measurements along the wells, plus possibly a contribution of the core description made in some wells by the geologist. So we can combine smoothly all these kind of informations and enrich the definition of clusters um, uh, with a high level of uh, accuracy uh, and get, get a result with a high level of accuracy and of realism, of geological realism. I said that uh, I have customized my algorithm to get results very rapidly for this presentation. And actually, it is in the tab Big Data Management. I can define a sampling ratio. So it means I apply the um, geostatistical hierarchical algorithms on a fraction of the whole data set. In that case, it is 3%. Uh, I have in total uh, 30, uh, 360,000 uh, samples. So 3%, it is a uh, few uh, 2,000 samples. If I consider 10%, so 36,000 samples, um, it takes uh, three about three minutes, uh, the calculations. So we can uh, play with this parameter to make some customization of the algorithm. First, with a, a low proportion to customize all the other input parameters, and then we can uh, increase these proportions to um, increase the accuracy progressively, and then we launch the final calculations. So this is that's it for the presentation. So I come back for the live demo. I come back to my presentation. To conclude, the geostatistical hierarchical clustering algorithms and the hybrid classification approach we, we have demonstrated um, has had as an objective to sample fl to flag all the samples uh, based on geological criteria, to account the spatial dependency man, between the samples in order to increase accuracy of the results and productivity. Um, Updating such uh, classification is fast, faster than traditional methods, thanks to the efficiency of SVM uh, technique. It's very flexible. This, as it is an hybrid classification, it's extremely flexible, and we can play with different sources of data and input with the um, neighborhood we are using in the geostatistical uh, algorithm. We can input some uh, geological uh, features, geological trends. So this is a, a very uh, innovative and efficient methods for preparing um, geological modeling. Uh, these clustering results are used, can be used as conditioning data in geological modeling for uh, the traditional uh, uh, facial simulation methods like SIS, uh, uh, pro-regression simulation technique, PGS, or multi-point statistics, uh, the MPS techniques, different techniques, uh, facious modeling techniques that will be presented in uh, in November uh, in another webinar dedicated to, to this uh, purpose. So, to conclude, a brief uh, reminder of uh, who we are, what is GeoVariance, 
Uh, GeoVariant is a software vendor and developer and software vendor uh, specialized in advanced geostatistics and industry leader in this domain. Uh, we have a partnership uh, with the Center of Geostatistics in the School of Mines of Paris. Uh, we have also a partnership uh, with the University of Neuchâtel in Switzerland. It has been founded in 86. And um, we have uh, 40 plus technical experts and cons both consultants and software developers. We are based, the, the headquarters are in France, in, in Fontainebleau near Paris, but we have also some uh, subsidiaries and offices in Brazil, in Australia, in Chile. These, these three uh, offices being mainly, not only, but mainly dedicated to the mining industry. And we uh, perform, so we develop and sell software like IZTS Neo, and we perform some service uh, in geostatistics. So, uh, mineral resources estimation uh, studies or uh, subsurface modeling uh, studies and so on. We provide also training courses. You see here in this slide the next uh, online training courses. We The next courses will be exclusively online. Um, it's possible to organize some uh, presential um, courses, but in this uh, particular period of time, uh, we are privilegiating uh, online training courses. We are working uh, in oil and gas with some important uh, companies. Uh, you can see uh, set of, a sample of all the companies with whom we, we work in mining as well. You will see some important mining companies, Valet, uh, Anglo Gold Ashanti, Glencore, uh, Rio Tinto, De Beers, BHP, and in hydrogeology or um, uh, also in uh, civil engineering, uh, we, we have an activity in hydrogeology. We are working a lot with the um, geological, national geological services, and BRGM in France, TNO in the Netherlands. Uh, BGS in the, in the UK, CREALP is a research center in Switzerland, etc. If you want a demo license or if you want to try the software, you can contact Jean-Paul Roux at looks at geovariances.com or fill a form. Uh, the address is, look, is shown here. This form will be uh, is available on the Geovariances website. And there will be some webinars. Uh, the easy mapping with Isatis Neo uh, has been, the, the date has changed this week. It will not be in October, it will be the 10, 10 of December. And facial simulation, uh, webinar dedicated to facial simulation methods with our pros and cons, is uh, planned for the 19th of November. So you are cordially invited to attend this next webinar in November. So I would like to thank you for your attention. And then you can type your questions and I will try to uh, answer these questions. So the first questions I see, so there are a lot, it seems. Uh, okay. You mentioned, uh, how does this process deal with uh, structural discontinuities. So I suppose structural discontinuities, you are talking about faults. Um, so if we have some uh, post-sedimentation faults, uh, typically uh, it's, it, occurs very, it occurs very currently in the oil and gas industry and also in mining, if we, uh, you have post-sedimentation faults, which do not modify the characteristics of the deposit on each side of the fault. If you work within a given stratigraphic unit, it means you have identified your main horizons, top Jurassic, top Cretaceous, for example, uh, within your wells, uh, then you 
define a given stratigraphic unit, you work within the stratigraphic unit. Uh, the, um, if you have a low contribution of the Z coordinate, then uh, it's not a big deal. It will be, the, the false will be filtered uh, because uh, you, we will privilege the, the measurements along the wells. And as we are within a given uh, stratigraphic unit, it will not alter the result. If we have a sense sedimentary fault, so a fault which is defining two zones uh, with different characteristics, then uh, it is recommended to separate these two zones and work separately independently in, in these two zones or give a high contribution, so a high proportion uh, of the coordinates to uh, really um, uh, enforce the, the, the fact that the, the characteristics are different in different zones. So it can be uh, reproduced and modeled with a high contribution of the coordinates. Uh, you mentioned it is possible to perform the analysis by zones. So where do you, uh, where do you specify it? On the workflow window, it is not. Uh, yes, it is specified in the workflow window because we ask for uh, where are the data, and just below we ask what are the selections applied to this data. So we can define before the calculations a selection on the data, so a mask, uh, and uh, selection. It's uh, just a zero one variable. If it is zero, the sample is discarded. If it is one, the sample is taken then we can define such selections before and enter uh, introduce this selection in the in the data uh, you talked about considering anisotropies must be both geometrical and zonal and what is to, what can be done if there is a drift or clustering of different faces variograms or different faces how is it used in clustering so if there is a, a drift uh, again um, this drift actually uh, will correspond to a variation of geological properties uh, with the spatial location. So it can be uh, taken into account a large, large scale drift through the uh, customized weight of coordinates. Uh, can this technique be used in geotechnical projects? Yes, of course. It can be used in any any project huh, uh, with any kind of uh, data. Generally, we use it for subsurface modeling. Huh? But subsurface modeling, it means it can be the closed subsurface, huh? uh, the, the first uh, 50 meters below uh, ground level or 100 meters for uh, civil engineering, for uh, uh, hydrogeology, uh, and so on. Uh, it can be a deep subsurface uh, with several thousands of meters uh, in oil and gas industry. In mining industry, we are generally in the first 100 meters for open pits, but it can be deeper with uh, uh, with other type of mines. Uh, any kind of uh, measurements along uh, drill holes can be used, and there is no particular limitation here. Can you please introduce some reference for hierarchical uh, clustering? Yes, you will find these references on the GeoViances website. They are already there. So uh, in the resources, uh, there is a menu resource resources in the GeoViances website. You will find some references about this technique. Uh, when the X, Y, Z coordinates are used in the clustering, are the distances between samples Euclidean? Uh, um, but we connect, and after that, uh, we are in the in the graph, huh? the distance on the graph. Um, then, if there is a long question, long comment. Uh, okay. 
Uh, did you see any relation between suggested categories from here and the geological reality such as lithology? Ah, the goal is to reproduce lithology, so we expect that our uh, facies, electrophages, will correspond to uh, something which is real in, in terms of geology. Uh, so, because normally the parameters we are using uh, in, in the example, uh, the electric loads, uh, uh, are supposed to be related with uh, lithology, with lithological characteristics. Um, and then uh, these samples uh, will have uh, uh, geological meaning. And especially if uh, you input uh, with a customized uh, contribution the, the coordinates and uh, other uh, facious definition coming from core description, for example, then it will reinforce the realism and uh, accounting for uh, geological trends. Um, I can imagine low number of samples is a problem, yes, of course, in mining, and uh, suggesting just using a neighborhood is not making more uh, issues. But um, no, um, the neighborhood itself will just put emphasis on the uh, spatial relationship between close uh, samples. Um, the main issue regarding the number of samples comes from the proportion of the whole data set you are considering. Uh, if you have plenty of data, uh, like of um, in mining industry, if you have an already developed mine uh, with thousands of data, uh, or a mature field in oil and gas industry with thousands of data, it's not a big deal. You will always have um, an, enough samples, a sufficient amount of samples. If you are during uh, the exploration phase, this may be uh, an issue, but okay, we have no, uh, no way of escaping. Um, in such a case, Geological interpretation will be important. So the contribution of coordinates and contribution of, possibly contribution of uh, core descriptions. Um, what similarity factor did you use for clustering tables you showed? Um, but the similarities, there is no factor. Uh, in fact, as we apply the formula and in my particular case, uh, I just played with the contribution and I have shown the different contribution between coordinates and, uh, and electric, electric logs. Um, how this similarity, this similarity is calculated? Uh, so the formula, you will find it in the uh, publications and the papers that are provided in the um, in the Geofariances uh, website. Is it similar to principal components? Not exactly, uh, not exactly. Um, uh, a French comment, uh, so I will translate. What is the unit of the values in the, in the tables? Uh, for the dissimilarity table of results. Actually, the result is a facious, so it is uh, a dimensional. There is no dimension, no, no unit, and it's just a, a category. Yeah? Uh, is there any uncertainty associated to the estimated facious? Um, that can be used as a classification quality. Uh, not, not directly, actually, you have the, in the final plot with the box plots, huh? uh, you see the, the range of values for each, uh, and the, the range of values for a given uh, parameter, so a photoelectric factor, uh, density, uh, gamma ray, uh, uh, or the coordinates, you see the, the amplitude of values that have been uh, considered for the definition of a given facies. So it means you can see whether, uh, if you see that uh, in a given facies, all the um, parameters 
are contributing to these fascias with a wide range of value, uh, it is, the result is questionable. Right? It means that, uh, by the way, the, the, the classification is not very efficient. But this is the only way we have to uh, to analyze it. We can uh, can you consider different neighborhood? Uh, yes, uh, we can make different tests, uh, record different tests. Huh? There is a way to uh, to record what we are doing in in a batch file, huh? and then you can make different tests, record these tests, and play with different neighborhoods, different orientations, different different things. Huh? Uh, do you have guidance for the choice of weights? Uh, it, it really depends, Daniel, on the um, on, on each case study, and eh? there is no uh, specific rule, and so the, it will be the results of the data analysis. Uh, difficult to provide a, a, thumb of, a rule of thumb that will apply in in any case. Eh? It's uh, it's really a user choice uh, which results from the data analysis. Or can we uh, validate the resulting clusters by this method? Uh, one way to validate, if you are in a sedimentary deposit, for example, uh, within a given uh, sedimentary sequence, you can use these features, uh, these results, uh, uh, in the spacious proportion uh, modeling um, technique. In Zatis Neo, we have a, a method for calculating a pro a distribution of facious proportions around the, the, the area under study. So it's, uh, it's used later for geological modeling. And we calculate vertical proportion curves. So the vertical proportion curves are normally related with the sequence, with the stratigraphic sequence. Uh, so uh, if we are in a given geological environment, we can expect a certain type of vertical proportion curve. You can calculate the vertical proportion curve from the facies you have just defined. If you get what is expected by the geologist, that's OK. If you get something totally different, it means that we got a mathematical result uh, with uh, poor um, physical meaning geological meaning it, it can occur uh, so it's a way to um, to test the realism uh, of the result um, you said this technique can be used in geo geotechnical projects uh, how rmr is calculated with a combination of many critical parameters like joints etc um, we can use in um, civil engineering, yeah, but using uh, standard continuous uh, parameters, standard continuous measurements. Uh, if you have a distribution of fault joints, etc., uh, we do not connect each individual uh, joint. Yeah. It's uh, or fault or uh, this, this kind of things, discontinuity, let's say. We can uh, work with a density of of uh, discontinuities locally. So we have to transform it into a, a continuous parameter. Uh, reference of this, of this technique, I have no reference yet. It's a very new technique, so it has not been, uh, I, I have no uh, case study uh, or public scientific publication I can provide uh, yet. Uh, for uh, in in geotechnical domain for this uh, technique, how do you calculate the dissimilarity? So the formula is in some uh, uh, papers that are in the Geovariances website. Uh, could you please tell about the main idea of this methodology? Is it to interpret lithology from well logging using machine learning, or to model 3D distribution of lithology? But uh, both, I would say, it is. The idea is to prepare 3D modeling of the uh, distribution of lithology yeah? uh, by defining electrophages, defining classes of rock that are taking into account uh, geological uh, features. Yeah? Um, and we do this from well logging using 
a combination of geostatistical algorithm and machine learning algorithm. How the SVM parameters are optimized? But the SVM parameters, we are just uh, we are just able to control the the subset and so the size of the subset on which uh, we define the supervised samples, uh, the samples for uh, the training samples for supervision. Uh, we do not have so much uh, parameters for controlling the SVM itself. Huh? Be careful. Any other question? No. So um, I will thank you for attending and for all these questions. And uh, you are uh, warmly welcome to the next webinar dedicated to um, to facious modeling. Huh? And uh, I will uh, just thank you and uh, say you have a good day. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.